What happens when human ambition collides with the ticking clock of a supervolcano? How long can modern infrastructure survive beneath a restless giant that has shaped landscapes and buried civilizations? And why, despite decades of warnings, do people continue to build directly on the edge of catastrophe? Beneath the picturesque coastlines of southern Italy, something ancient is stirring. The ground doesn't just shake here, it breathes, swells, and groans. In the heart of the Campi Flegre caldera, a massive supervolcano long believed to be dormant is showing signs of growing unrest. The warning signs are everywhere. Rising ground, toxic gas emissions, persistent micro-earthquakes, and yet life continues above as if nothing were wrong. But it is wrong. A magnitude 4.0 earthquake on July 18th sent a shockwave not just through the ground, but through the fragile illusion of safety that has blanketed this volatile region for years. What was dismissed as a minor tremor has turned out to be one of the most damaging seismic events in the area in recent history. It fractured tunnels, triggered landslides, and exposed the truth. Much of the infrastructure here is not built to endure what is coming. The quake struck near the town of Dazio, shaking the very bones of the ground beneath Monte Olibano, a sector that sits perilously close to the hyperactive Solfatara crater. This crater isn't just a scenic geological feature, it is a vent for Earth's deep pressures, constantly releasing toxic steam and acidic gases. Directly below this dangerous terrain runs the Cumana railway system, a vital artery connecting the towns of Bagnoli and Arco Felice. Within hours, both the decades-old operational tunnel and a new tunnel still under construction were found to be structurally compromised. The new tunnel, ironically built as a supposed safeguard, is now cracked and unusable. 300 metres or 1,000 feet of concrete and steel, no match for the ancient forces beneath. Experts were rushed to the site, not volcanologists, but tunnel engineers. And that decision, more than anything, revealed the flaw in the system, the belief that this crisis is merely an engineering challenge, not a geological time bomb. This tunnel, like many others beneath the Campi Flegrai region, was constructed using rigid structural principles, making it incapable of absorbing the intense seismic energy generated by the constant bradyseism and microquakes. The local transit authority overseeing the tunnel admitted that these structures cannot bend, expand or disperse energy. That same rigidity, beneficial in calm regions, becomes a vulnerability in volcanic zones. The 4.0 magnitude quake's epicenter, situated dangerously close to both tunnels, caused widening in previously observed cracks and introduced new fractures. The older Kumana Tunnel, built at an elevation of 85 metres or 279 feet above sea level, was closed almost immediately. Train service between Bagnoli and Arco Felice was suspended and emergency shuttle buses were deployed as a temporary solution. However, this quick fix only deepened another crisis. The road network in the area is already overwhelmed, and adding hundreds of additional vehicles daily has created relentless traffic jams. If another stronger quake were to hit, or if evacuation became necessary, the congestion could prove catastrophic. Further analysis revealed that a landslide had occurred along the Via Napoli coastal road, also part of the Monte Olibano sector. This indicated that the seismic energy released on July 18th was far more impactful than originally believed. Local officials now suspect that this particular event may be the most damaging single earthquake in recent memory in the region, not due to its strength alone, but because of its proximity to already compromised infrastructure. To many, the deeper concern is not simply the damage already done, but the growing risk of cascading failures across the region's complex and ageing network of underground routes. Roads, railways and even residential buildings are weakening under years of continuous seismic stress. Each new tremor, regardless of its magnitude, further compromises an already fragile system. And this is before even considering the potential for a volcanic eruption. What makes the situation more alarming is the placement of these structures right through and beneath the most geologically dangerous sectors of the supervolcano. The very idea of constructing an underground train line through an active caldera, where acidic groundwater, toxic gases and frequent quakes create a volatile brew, 
now appears unthinkable in hindsight. Yet it was done not once, but twice. Despite warnings from geologists, construction on the second tunnel continued in recent years. Years that also saw a dramatic increase in both the number and intensity of earthquakes, as well as measurable ground uplift, which has reached approximately 1.5 centimetres, or 0 0.6 inches per month. The director of the Vesuvius Observatory, Lucia Papalado, recently addressed the growing concerns in her first public statements since taking over the leadership of the institution. While she confirmed that Bradyseism continues and that further seismic activity is expected, she made no mention of the increasing intensity of these quakes or the possibility of a phreatic or magmatic eruption, concerns that many of her colleagues have voiced with increasing urgency. Dr. Papalado is a seasoned volcanologist with over three decades of experience, known for her research on magmatic systems and eruption forecasting. Her credentials are extensive. She has coordinated both national and international research projects, contributed to the scientific understanding of large-scale eruptions, and studied the impact of pyroclastic flows and ashfall on human populations. She is considered an expert on supervolcanic activity and magmatic ascent processes. And yet, her public messaging has so far remained cautiously bureaucratic, perhaps constrained by institutional pressures or the fear of inciting panic. Her predecessor... Dr. Mauro De Vito, was similarly cautious in tone during his tenure. But many experts outside the immediate institutional framework are now issuing dire warnings. They argue that the region is being pushed closer to a breaking point and that the continued pattern of dismissing structural damage or downplaying the frequency of tremors is endangering lives. According to independent assessments, the old tunnel had already undergone significant modifications in the 1980s during another major period of seismic unrest. It was widened to accommodate a new station, and some of the cracks that reappeared in July had first emerged during that earlier phase of Brady seismic activity. This raises critical questions. If both the old and new tunnels fail to meet the seismic resilience required for this environment, what chance does the broader region have in the face of a larger event? This situation underscores a broader issue in Campi Flegre, one of misaligned priorities and incomplete understanding of volcanic dynamics. Despite decades of research and the region's infamous history, including eruptions that reshaped entire landscapes, urban planners and engineers continue to build as if the volcano were dormant, not merely sleeping, and what happens when it wakes up? As investigators traced the tremor's impact zone, they uncovered a troubling pattern. Cracks ran like veins through the newly laid concrete of the Kumana Tunnel. Seismic sensors in the area confirmed what many feared. This was no isolated quake. It was part of a broader sequence, a swarm of smaller earthquakes creeping across the caldera, each one adding strain to an already pressurized underground system. What made this swarm especially alarming wasn't just the frequency of the tremors, but their location. Many of them were clustered directly beneath densely populated neighbourhoods, precariously built over unstable ground. The town of Pozzuoli, for example, has been slowly rising for years, its streets, homes and ancient ruins all being lifted by a hidden force. This process, known as Bradyseism, is driven by the expansion of volcanic gases and magma underground, pushing upward against the Earth's crust. Since the 1950s, this uplift has reshaped entire communities, but now it's accelerating. Buildings that once stood firm are now tilting. Sidewalks have lifted like warped puzzle pieces, and the waterline has shifted so dramatically in certain places that docks no longer meet the sea. The threat is not just from below, but from how unprepared human systems are to respond above. One might ask, with so much evidence of geologic instability, why are so many people still living in the caldera's heart? The answer lies in a blend of cultural attachment, economic necessity, and governmental missteps. The region is rich in history, filled with relics of Roman civilization and deep family roots. Many residents have never lived anywhere else. For them, leaving is not just abandoning a home, it is tearing away from a way of life. But their loyalty to the land is being tested by something far older and more indifferent than any human system, the Earth's internal clock. As night fell after the July quake, fear spread faster than aftershocks. 
Some residents reported hearing rumbling beneath their homes. Others described sulfurous smells like rotten eggs filling the air. Near Solfatara, ground temperatures were reported to have risen, and fumaroles, the steaming vents that dot the crater's floor, intensified their output. Scientists monitoring gas emissions noted a disturbing uptick in carbon dioxide and sulphur dioxide levels, both of which are known precursors to volcanic activity. And yet, despite these signs, evacuation protocols remain unchanged. Officials continue to call for calm, assuring the public that while the situation is being closely monitored, there is no immediate cause for alarm. But among geologists, a different sentiment is growing, one of unease. The uplift... The seismic swarms, the gas emissions, all point toward a system under increasing pressure. Some experts have drawn parallels to the events leading up to the 1982-84 to 84 crisis, when similar Bradyseism forced the evacuation of over 30,000 people from Pozzuoli. Back then, the volcano didn't erupt, but it did show just how violently the ground could respond when pushed too far. Today, the population of that same town has more than doubled and the stakes are higher than ever. In the days following the July tremor, Campi Flegre has not gone quiet. Instead, the earth has grown restless. Dozens of microquakes continue to ripple through the crust, each one a whisper from beneath, a reminder that the sleeping giant is still stirring. Scientists with the INGV, Istituto Nazionale di Geofisica e Vulcanologia, have warned that this unrest is no anomaly. It is part of a growing pattern of volcanic reawakening. The real danger, however, is not a single massive explosion, but the silent preparation that precedes it. Before Vesuvius unleashed its fury in 79 AD, it too gave subtle signs, ground uplift, tremors, gas emissions. Many ignored them until it was too late, and Campi Flegre, unlike Vesuvius, is not a cone-shaped peak, it is an invisible threat, a collapsed supervolcano lying beneath towns, roads and schools. Experts fear that the next eruption could follow a phreatic sequence, an explosive interaction between groundwater and magma that can occur with little to no warning. This type of eruption doesn't require magma to reach the surface. All it takes is enough heat, pressure and water. Solfatara, the crater believed to be the most likely eruption point, is especially dangerous for this reason. Its steaming vents and boiling mud pools are not just geological curiosities. They are escape valves for a volatile underground system. And still, tourists flock to the area. Buses rumble through narrow streets. Children play near fumaroles. Life continues as if the ground beneath them is just dirt, not a volatile time bomb. So what happens if the warning signs intensify? Will the government act quickly enough? Can an evacuation of half a million people be executed in time? Or will hesitation turn Campi Flegre from a scientific marvel into Europe's Pompeii of the modern age? In a world already facing environmental extremes, economic hardship and geopolitical tension, nature is reminding us that it too holds power beyond human control. What happens beneath Naples is not just an Italian concern, it is a global wake-up call. Because Campi Flegre doesn't need to erupt to cause devastation. It only needs to keep rising. If you found this breakdown insightful and you want to stay updated on Earth's hidden threats, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Your support helps us dig deeper, question harder and bring you the facts others overlook.